In 2024, there are a number of different and alternative career paths that you can take instead of doing a PhD. I know a PhD is something that lots of people want to be able to embark on, but it isn't necessary for everybody and I think lots of people realize that once they begin their PhD or once they complete their PhD that they actually regret completing it because it wasn't necessary for the field that they wanted to go into and it actually sometimes puts you at a disadvantage for certain professions and careers. So there are alternative paths and opportunities that you can take instead of trying to get onto a PhD program that actually in the long run may lead you to be at an advantage to someone with a PhD. So the first one is embarking on a professional master's program. So a professional master's focus on very practical topics. So for example, if it's a professional master's within research, then you'll be spending the whole 12 months doing research. So I actually did a professional master's. My MRes, which is a master's in research, was at Imperial College London. And the whole 12 months was just in a lab. So I spent the first six months in one lab and then my second rotation was in a different lab group. And this is a professional master's because actually what it means is at the end of the 12 months, I was in a position that I could have actually joined a research group as a research assistant or as a junior researcher. So I didn't necessarily need a PhD to stay in academia. And actually, you'll hear me go on a bit more, but I could even have lectured. I could have, you know, done teaching within the university. So I did not necessarily need to have a PhD to stay in academia. So that's definitely a possibility that you can look into instead of doing a traditional master's like an MSc, which is more of a taught master's, um, or doing a PhD. The second thing that you can do is getting some industry certifications. So these are certifications that employers really value, that increase your skills and put you at a point where you are able to negotiate a bit more with your salary or with your position. And it just means that Yes, you could have gone and done a three-year PhD in the subject, but actually you've got some certification that might have taken you a few months or a year or so, but actually it means that you're able to progress a bit quicker within your research area or within your career in general, and you don't necessarily need to have a PhD. One thing that I think PhDs tend to realize throughout their PhD is that PhDs sometimes put you at a disadvantage because if you are applying for a job and someone else is applying for a job and you have a PhD, sometimes employers look at that and say, right, I'm not going to interview that PhD because they might have high requirements for their salary. They are overqualified, over experienced, and so it leads them to actually look beyond you and go for the person that has the right experience, but not necessarily has the PhD. So if you're just able to get the certification that you need to be able to go into the careers that you want, then a PhD isn't necessary here. The third way is by going into entrepreneurship or um, start a startup. So I've actually heard lots of PhDs that have finished um, and graduated and then they go into working with startups that could be a medical startup it could be something you know within their research area that they're interested in but startups tend to be quite similar to academia you have a very small team you've got funding there isn't much of a strict direction and you as someone within that startup you have a lot more creative control a lot more than you would have if you were in corporate for example or if you were working for a really big company working in a startup means that you have that creativity to take different directions to try different things out and that's okay because that is part of being in a startup um, trying different things out and seeing what works. So if you think, actually, I really like the dynamic environment that a PhD might give me, um, then look to maybe join a startup and try to find one that you can relate to. The pay tends to be quite good. The employment like um, benefits tend to be quite good as well when it comes to startups, because like I said, it's a really small team. They want to keep you there. They want to like entice you. So they tend to be good benefits like gym, um, healthcare, private healthcare, things like that. So that's something to look at as well. The next career option they could go into is R&D, which is research and development in industry. So they tend to, this is basically a field where you have like, let's say a car company, like let's say Nissan. Nissan will hire 
research and developers so they are indeed people which basically means that they're looking into the research of their new products that are coming out or new products that you, they might be looking into um, building or creating and you have to do the research for that and present to them with your findings and they tend to hire PhDs because PhDs have that analytical skill set. However, there are opportunities where even if you don't have a PhD, but you have an analytical background through your degree or through your experience, through work, that you can actually apply for these jobs and get in. They're really well paid. Um, they're considered corporate, but they are, you know, you do work kind of in a team, but you do have creativity to kind of search for things and do your own research and have your own kind of time. And with these positions, you are working at the cutting edge of that industry. So you're looking at the latest sort of findings, the latest tech, the latest gear, the latest engineering. Um, and if you're into that, then this could be something that you can also look for. The next thing that you could do is go into teaching or education. I mentioned this bit earlier, but actually you don't need a PhD to lecture. And I found this out after I finished my PhD and I was a little bit annoyed because one of the reasons why I did a PhD was because I really wanted to lecture. I really wanted to teach and I thought that you had to have a PhD and that was just part of the progression. You actually don't because my friend who has a master's ended up lecturing at a UK university and I was like, oh, I could have just done a master's then. Um, of course, having a PhD is also valuable, but if you're just looking to study for a PhD and if you just want to lecture and you don't necessarily want to continue on with the postdoc and research, then you actually can do that without having a PhD. So look into some universities where they're looking for um, lectureships. They tend to be paid by hour. So they might not, it probably, it can be, but it might not be like a full-time role that's salaried for the whole year. But if you are looking for positions that you want to start off with in teaching or education within universities or higher education, there definitely are positions for those that have the experience. And it's all about having the experience here. Do you tutor? Do you have an online course? Have you done anything else where you've mentored someone, where you've taught someone? If you can show you've got that experience and that background, then for sure you can go into teaching or lecturing at a university without a PhD. So yeah. Just letting you know that because I didn't know that. <laughs> the next one is working in government and looking at policy and sort of policy analysis. This is one that I discovered, um, I think it was after my PhD, I was looking into maybe going into policy, educational policy and kind of learning a bit more about how policies come about. And I was actually really shocked to learn that and actually to, to see that a lot of it was very similar to what I did in the lab. So you've got lots of data and you're analyzing the data and you're kind of figuring out different patterns and trends and writing up what's best and what could be a good idea to kind of um, implement for policy makers and, and, and MPs and things like that. So I thought it was actually like really interesting and it's something that I could have been interested in doing if I didn't do a PhD and you, you can get into it a lot, a lot younger instead of spending three, four years doing a PhD and then going into it, you can apply straight out of university. And in the UK, there are loads of positions that you can work within government. So for example, in the DfE, the Department of Education, you can work with them um, and start from a junior role, which I think started around 30 or 40,000 pounds. So pretty decent. And it works up all the way to more senior and advising people as well. So the position and the actual role itself is very similar to working in a, in a lab or working sort of doing a PhD. So if that was what you're interested in, then this could be a good alternative. The next one is consulting. Um, this is like management consulting, business consulting. Um, so you're working for like big four. Um, so I found that lots of PhD students that had finished, so PhD graduates, uh, were looking into going into consulting because again, it's a very, it leads to a very similar outcome in the workforce, in the workspace after you finished. It's very analytical. You're dealing with like project work and that's quite similar to what a PhD is like. It's quite dynamic. You do a project and then you move on to the next one. Um, it, you need lots of independent thoughts. It isn't easy. So this is probably one of the most challenging ones that I've presented. But when I look at where PhD graduates go, a lot of them go into consulting. And I think that a lot of the reason for that is because it's using very similar skill sets and um, developing very similar skill sets as you would develop if you were uh, doing a PhD. The pay is slightly lower 
the start point, the starting point, is slightly lower, still high, but slightly lower than if you had a PhD. So if you had a PhD, someone else didn't, you're starting at the same role, the same level, then your PhD holder would have a slightly, slightly higher salary but it does even out and it's already really high, so it's fine. Um, so yeah, that's definitely something to consider. You can get into that You're a lot younger and build yourself up and get to a really kind of high level and high point um, quite quickly. Okay, last but not least is data science. This is one that is maybe a bit more specific, but I find, again, lots of PhD grads go into data science roles post-graduation. Um, again, really, they tend to be quite small groups. Um, that you might work in. They tend to be really analytical jobs where you are sort of interpreting data. And if this is something that you're interested in, then you could look at data science roles. There are loads out at the moment that I've seen, really well paid, really in demand. And so yeah, that's another option as well. I hope this video was helpful in discovering some new career options and opportunities that you could take. Uh, if you are thinking of PhD alternatives because a PhD is not everything, you can be really successful without getting one and maybe later on in life you could decide you want to do it but start off somewhere else to begin with. Let me know what you did if you did anything other than a PhD and you think it could be quite similar for someone that could be interested in it and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!